Whatever happened to Shania Twain? Back in the 90s, she was everywhere. Her catchy country pop music seemed to pop up every time we switched on the radio. In fact, she was so popular, one of her albums still ranks as the highest selling by any female artist. But after a decade at the top, Shania abruptly and rather mysteriously left the stage. She gave up adulation for isolation and became a recluse. It possibly had something to do with her love life, which was so confused and complicated, it deserved its own heartbreaking country song. But now, Shania Twain's return to the spotlight, and it's as if she's never been away. Let's go, girls. Hard to believe it's been 18 years since Shania Twain put choreography back into country music. I'm going out tonight. I'm Looking back at it, I'm a little more like, wow, that was a lot to accomplish in my life. She was the queen of country pop, and nobody was immune. OK, so you're Brad Pitt. That don't impress me much. I have to ask you, Brad Pitt, does he really not impress you much? <laughs> but it's a cheeky line. <laughs> it's a cheeky line. Well, the whole thing is tongue in cheek, so and he's one of the world's most handsome men. But, I, you know, just because you're gorgeous doesn't mean you're impressive. You're still the one I love. The one that I belong. But in 2002, at the height of her success, she virtually disappeared. What the world didn't know was that behind closed doors, Shania faced the worst possible betrayal. If you're looking at cheating on a scale of one to 10, that was an 11. <laughs> That wasn't 11. I wasn't just broken, I was shattered. And nothing else was worse in my life than that moment. And a debilitating illness that almost ended her career. So you just have to manage it forever. I have to manage it forever. It'll never be 100%. This is the music comeback of the year. 52-year-old Shania's first album in 15 years. And if that's not enough, she's off to Hollywood. Well, Alabama, actually. Starring in a new movie, alongside one of her more passionate groupies, John Travolta. Your number one ticket holder of the Shania Twain fan club. Oh, you bet I am. <laughs> <laughs> the reaction to Shania Twain starts at a 10. And I'm not exaggerating, and goes from 10 upwards. Shania, whose real name is Eileen, grew up in Ontario, Canada the second eldest of five children. Her family lived in extreme poverty, and she and mum Sharon were also subjected to repeated abuse, both verbal and physical, at the hands of her stepdad, Jerry. Basically, he would swear at you and right. call your names and right. in a really derogatory... Vulgarities, yeah, absolutely. But he must have had huge anger issues. He... He just had issues, and... At the time, I was looking at this man as somebody that was not being himself. It was like he was two people. But this is also the man who almost drowned your mother by forcing her head into a yes. toilet bowl. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. It's the same man. And I would, I would get physically involved sometimes with my parents' fights because I just thought that he would kill her. One of these times, he's going to kill her. Here's a lady who's going to be around for a long, long time. She's only 12 years old. Eileen Twain. From an early age, Shania had undeniable talent. At eight, she was already writing and performing songs at local bars to support the family financially. And by 13, she made her first television appearance. Her star was on the rise until 1987, when Sharon and Jerry Twain were killed in a car accident. And 22-year-old Shania was forced to put her music career on hold to care for her younger siblings. At that point in my life, I would have rather gone with them. It's like, this is way too much to handle. When you think about it, and I'm not trying to make light of this, but when you think about the amount of grief and abuse and other things that you've endured, in your relatively short life. You were born to be a country singer-songwriter, weren't you? <laughs> I would say more like I was born to be a fighter and a survivor. 
Um, but I mean, life has given you all this material, whether you like it yeah. or not. Yeah, it's true. It really has. Within a few years, Nashville came knocking. And from that moment on, Shania was making and breaking records. Yes. 75 million album sales. Hello, darling! Five Grammy Awards. If you're not in She also fell in love and married her co-writer and producer, Robert Mutt Lang. And together, they had a son, Asia. You're at the top of your game. And then you, 15 years ago, you say, stop, that's enough. I'd been working hard for over a decade, like really, really, really hard, intensely. And uh, I just had a baby and I, I'm like, you know, I'm, re I'm ready for a break. And I was all of a sudden having voice issues, you know, and I, just figured it was fatigue. I mean, I've been, I sang so hard today. I'm exhausted. I, I, I probably won't even be able to speak tomorrow. But it was something far more serious. And this deliberate sabbatical turned into a long 10 years, while doctors tried to diagnose the problem. This is easier. What I had was partial paralysis in both the nerves that are connected to the vocal cords. Is that permanent nerve damage? Permanent. You can't correct that nerve damage. How'd you get that? So this neurologist, that's what I asked him. <laughs> I'm like, well, how did I get this? And he said, just he named off a few of the most uh, linked diseases and Lyme's disease was there. And the light went on in my head. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I said, yes, I've had Lyme's disease. Lyme's disease from a tick. Yes, from a tick bite. So what's the prognosis? It'll heal to a degree, but you're always going to have some scar tissue maybe. It'll never be 100%. Can it fail you on stage? Yes, it can fail me on stage. Of course, this, it, it can be, it can give out. Like your knee can give out. Well, doesn't that worry you? Yes, it does worry me. It adds to my anxiety and... Um, That's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. While trying to save her professional life, Shania's personal life was also falling apart. In 2008, after 15 years together, Shania discovered her husband, Robert, had done the unthinkable. He was having an affair with her best friend, Marianne Thebo. It's going from believing that it was so wonderful and believing in it to then all of a sudden, whoa, you know, whoa, okay, I guess it wasn't as wonderful as I thought. I think what made my, uh, my divorce heavier for me in the moment was the fact that it was like, oh, one more, like, I don't think I can handle one more bloody thing, don't bloody say thing it. like that. Like how many more, um, you know, traumatic um, moments can I take? But in one of the most bizarre cases of spousal swap, Shania did go on to find love again. Having bonded over their mutual heartache, in 2011, she married Fred Thebo, the ex-husband of that same best friend, Marianne, who ran off with Shania's original husband. When I put it all in perspective of my entire life, that was not at the top of my uh, things difficult to forgive. In the moment, of course, it was difficult to forgive. But then along comes Fred. Thank and goodness. then along comes Fred. Thank goodness for that. So the yes. As we know, Fred is not the only man with his eye on Shania. You know, there's only one Shania Twain, and, and that may be the way it always is. There's a lot of love between these old friends. So much so, it was John Travolta who convinced Shania to be his latest muse in his new flick, Trading paint. Is the rumour true that a few, few of the scenes have some serious action between you two? In which way? Oh, well, we, well, we have a kiss. We have a kiss. We have a few kisses, apparently. Yes. A few kisses? Yeah. Yes. We haven't practised that part yet. It must be hard to kiss one of your mates on screen. Oh, I think it'll be very easy. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> but, John, what is it about Shania that gives her the X factor? 
Oh boy, I might cry if I tell this. So I, I, I um, besides being brilliantly gifted as an artist, a performer, a singer, a writer, um, there's a humanity about Shania. And she got it all. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And he's giving me a chance. I mean, this is really amazing for me because I never, um, I've always just been really busy with the music career. You know, jumping into this now, I don't think I would have the confidence if I wasn't being, like if, if John wasn't holding my hand <laughs> through it. Oh, lots about joy, lots about pain. Movies aside, Shania's main focus is on her solo singing career. Where did you write this one? Life's well, about to get good. I wrote it on a beach, so uh -huh. there's right. the optimistic lyric. Last time she released an album, there was no such thing as Spotify or social media. And she knows these days the market is flooded with young artists willing to do anything for their piece of fame and fortune. But she's not letting that kind of pressure get in the way of her return to the industry. To you, at this point in time, this moment, yeah. what will a successful comeback look like to you? Well, a successful comeback for me is, well, first of all, being able to make an album where people go, oh, I love your voice, your, your voice sounds great. Still. Because, I mean, I never thought I would sing again. So the fact that I'm still doing this and getting the positive feedback is, I feel like my cheerleaders are are there. I don't see it like a competition anymore. I feel like a triumph is happening to me right now. And... You're still the one. <laughs> and I'm still the one. That was, um, that was a cool thing to say. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>